Hello everyone, I am Ms. Hu, your physics teacher. In this video, we will be observing a practical demonstration of the interaction between current and magnetic field which induces a force. This is related to the concept of Fleming's left hand rule. Now before we go into the observation of the practical demonstration, first of all, let's have a quick recall about this concept. If you'd like to learn or recall more about this concept, please watch my video on forces on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. I've placed the link in the description below. So for now, let's just do a quick recall. The diagram on the left here represents a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field. So this black line here, let's say represents a wire that's part of a circuit. So there's current flowing through this wire, let's say in this direction. These two objects represent the bar magnets. So because they're placed at a distance with opposite poles, north and south, this will create a magnetic field between the two magnets. This wire with current flowing through it is placed within that magnetic field. So if you can recall what you've learned, this creates a catapult field which causes the wire to move. We can determine the direction where the wire moves using Fleming's left hand rule. So everything must be at right angles. To use Fleming's left hand rule, we must know what each of these thumb and fingers represent. So the thumb represents the direction of the force or the motion. So I'm going to write here, force. The index finger represents the direction of the magnetic field. While the middle finger represents the direction of the current. Or as I like to say, feed my cat. Force, magnetic field, current, feed my cat. That's an easy way to remember what all of these represent. So by using Fleming's left hand rule, if we were to check the direction of the magnetic field and the direction of the current, you'll find that the thumb is pointing upwards. So if you want to check, take your left hand, form it just like mine, and have the directions follow the diagram. So north to south is from left to right, the current is flowing towards you, so towards you, and the thumb is pointing up. That means that the wire should be moving upwards. So now that we know what happens when a current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field, how do we observe this in the lab? This is the experiment which we can use to observe the force on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. You must have a power supply and it must be direct current because current should be flowing in only one direction. So the DC power supply is connected to the copper tracks which are in turn connected to a short copper wire. Now the copper tracks and a short copper wire have to be exposed so that current can flow freely from the power supply through the copper tracks, through the short copper wire and then through the other track back into the power supply. So the copper tracks and the short copper wire must be exposed because the short copper wire will move. And in order to maintain the connection of the circuit, they have to be exposed so that current can continuously flow through the copper tracks and the short copper wire. The short copper wire must be able to move freely and this is placed within a magnetic field. The magnetic field is created by placing two magnets with the opposite poles facing each other. That way, this creates a magnetic field. So when current flows through the copper wire, we can observe the movement of the copper wire, whether it's to the left or to the right. So here's the setup which I did in our lab. We have the power supply and we are using the direct current option here. For the copper tracks, I used two pieces of copper strip. I tried using copper rods, but unfortunately the copper rods we have in our lab are a little bit oxidated. So when I placed the copper wire on the copper tracks, the current wouldn't flow. So the circuit was not complete. The copper tracks have to be elevated so that we can place a magnet underneath. So that's why they are placed on a wooden block here. So I've taped them onto the wooden block so that the copper strips would remain in place and therefore easier for us to maintain a continuous connection between the free moving copper wire and the copper tracks. I completed the circuit by placing a rheostat and an ammeter within the circuit. So the purpose of having the ammeter here is so that we can observe whether there's current flow or not. The rheostat or the variable resistor here is needed to create some load because without this variable resistor, what happens is that the current flowing through the circuit will be a little bit too high and the power supply kept shutting down because of the overload. This is just a gas supply which you can ignore. 
You must of course also have magnets. So in my case, I use two bar magnets in order to observe the movement of the copper wire. If we look closely, there's a piece of free moving copper wire placed on the copper tracks. And you can see from the emitter there's current flowing, which means that the circuit is complete. So we must make sure there's current flowing through it. So here's a closer look at the setup. Here I've used copper strips to act as the copper track. So if you look closely, I have a piece of free moving copper wire over here. It has to be short and very light so that it can move easily. If we use something that's too heavy, even though there's a force applied, it won't move because it's just too heavy to move. So it's a little bit of a rough setup because I've used masking tape, uh, but as long as it works, why not? The masking tape is used here to hold the copper strips in place so that it provides a stable platform for this loose piece of wire to move easily. I did try without the tape and everything kept falling off. So that's why we tape it down for the wire to be able to move easily on a stable platform. So one thing you should know is that the current needs to be high enough and you can see that the current value here is just under 3 amperes. If the current is too low, for example below 1 ampere, you might find that the wire doesn't appear to move at all. And that's not because there's no force, it's just that the force is too low to make the wire move. So before we take a look at the movement of the wire, let's have a closer look at the setup. So we have the direct current power supply, the ammeter showing the current reading, the rheostat, the copper strips and the loose piece of wire, and two bar magnets which we will be using to observe the movement of the wire. So to observe the movement of the wire, I'll be holding the bar magnets freely, placing one above and the other below the loose wire to observe the movement. So let's watch. So that's the loose wire holding the bar magnets. Make sure that the bar magnets are opposite poles to create a magnetic field. The ammeter is very useful to make sure that there's current flow. And as you can see, there's movement of the wire. Again, always make sure there's current flow. And now you can see that the wire is moving. If any time the current drops to zero, just reposition the loose wire. Make sure there's current flow. And as you can see, there's movement of the wire. So let's watch that again. So as you can see from here, the current is flowing from this terminal which is actually connected to this end of the copper tracks. So current is flowing this way. So using Fleming's left hand rule, let's check that's where the current is flowing. It's flowing away from us based on this photo. When we take the bar magnet, you can see that north is underneath and south is above so it's pointing up. So that's why the wire is moving this direction based on your thumb direction. It's moving this way. And you can see that's right, the wire has moved this way. So when we flip the bar magnets, you can see now north is on top. So current that way, the magnetic field is now pointing downwards. The force is moving that way, so that's why the wire shifted there. Let's watch that one more time. to just give special thanks to Nadra for helping me prepare the materials for the setup and also for helping me take the video. So I hope you found this video to be educational and helpful. Please click like and subscribe for more free physics lessons. Do check out my YouTube channel for videos on other topics which you might find helpful. If you'd like to help me keep making free educational video lessons and lab practicals, donations are welcome at my coffee page, that's ko-fi.com slash physicsrocks. If you'd like access to notes, quizzes, and syllabus updates, check out my website at physicsrocks.com. Happy studying!